Okay. Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and welcome to Facebook Live. It's Wednesday. I think today is the last day of February. Um, and uh, today we have uh, an interesting topic. We, uh, many of you know, and many have read the articles about the speaker series we have at Hopkins, which is where we bring in people who are experts outside of medicine to tell us and teach us what they do, and then allow us to learn from them. And last week we, we've had, uh, we've done this about 25 times over the last four years and have had really spectacular people. Last week was no different, but we had Brian King, who's from one of the senior people at Marriott International and very fancy title, Global Officer, Digital Distribution, Revenue and Strategy and Global Sales. And he spoke to us about Marriott's um, plans, what they're doing. And remember, think about Marriott. You're a company of 6,500 properties in 127 countries. You have 30 brands that range from the courtyard of Four Points at the lower level, perhaps, to the Ritz-Carlton and Weston and everything in between. And you're dealing with people in all of these countries, and you're dealing with people who really want to know and want expectations. And so he explained to us how he thinks about things. He talks about what people expect, and he talks about how people have changed. You know, the fact that what your parents thought was good is not what people what you like, and what your grandparents like is different than what uh, you like, and how they are constantly evolving. In some sense, you can say the hotel business has never changed. You go to a hotel, you check in, you got a room, you got a shower, you got a bed, get some food. And in some sense, perhaps nothing has changed, but in a sense, everything has changed. And he spoke about how the fact is that when people go to hotels, they expect their life to continue. They don't want to be doing things differently than they do at home. And people expect businesses to understand their needs, their technology changes, and people want this consistency of things. They want to know that they're behaving the same way at home when they're on the road. So he made the point, for example, people, know, you know, I mean, all of us stay in hotels, and I pick up the phone and I call room service and look at the menu. But people don't want to do that because people never call up the phone. If you're home, you call up Grubhub or some other thing to, to bring you food, and you go online, you look at the menu on your cell phone, and you click the things you want, and then the food appears. You don't speak to anybody. Your credit card information is internal. You're not calling and checking and doing. And his point was that when you're in a hotel, why would you pick up the phone? You never pick up the phone. So now at the Marriott's, basically people go on their phone and they order. You can order when you're 10 minutes from the hotel or an hour from the hotel saying, look, have a, have a turkey sandwich in my room at, the, at 12 o'clock, whatever you want to do. And his thing was that if you don't anticipate what people want, you're going to do poorly. And this idea about the whole process of how to do things uh, is changing. And the fact is that everybody is texting at every age and in every country. He also made the point that we need to anticipate what people want based on experiences. So he was making the point that if you're a customer of Marriott, you're a frequent flyer, they know a lot about you. They know what kind of rooms you like, end of the hall, near the elevator, high floor, low floor, extra towels, hypo, allergic, whatever you want. And so when you call, it, they don't want it to be that you say to marry it 20 times, but the 21st call is as if you've never spoken to them before. They want you to call, and because they know you're calling, they want to say hello, Elliot. And they want to say, what can we help you with? Because we know this is specifically what you want. Um, that becomes a very, very critical part of their whole experience. And they also say that not only is their experience, but it's what they expect people to want to do. And then they say, and he was making the point, that you also need to constantly be changing. So, for example, he made this one statement that none of us ever thought about, and it's not just me, it was many other physicians, the head of nursing and many of the nurses, the technologists. He said at a hospital or an office, a medical office, you have a waiting room. Who in their right mind would have come up with the name waiting room? That doesn't sound really good, because what happens in a waiting room? You're waiting. It's like a Larry David episode, when he had that episode, 
when he was in the waiting room and was complaining about the old magazines or sitting around or having to sign in. Why are you waiting? Maybe it should be the patient experience room. You think of a better term. We're trying to think of a better term. But why would you call it a waiting room? That's such a negative connotation. And also we made the point is that people like to sit kind of in clusters. People don't want these lines of chairs. And the waiting room is so impersonal. You're looking at strangers who maybe don't feel well. Everyone feels uncomfortable. And he was saying that one of the things that Marriott's trying to do across their brands is kind of look at the model of Starbucks, for perhaps. Where if you go to Starbucks, most people go to Starbucks, get their coffee, and they leave. But you can sit down, and even though you don't know anybody, the chairs are set up in a certain way, the tables, it's relative comfort. Uh, Saxby's Coffee, One of remember we had the, the Saxby's people speak to us. The same thing, I've been to Saxby in Philadelphia. It's this really good experience because his point was that anybody can make good coffee, and the best brand of coffee depends on the person asking the question. You might like Dunkin' and I might like Saxby's or Starbucks or one of the 12 other brands. But what people like is the experience. That he says buying coffee is an experience. It's not just simply the coffee. That you can have the world's best coffee, but people will not go to your, your coffee shop because the experience is not what they expect. And this idea about digital. So uh, Brian was making the point, for example, when you check in now, all of us now know you can check in remotely. You can tell what time you're coming. Your room is ready. But by the end of the year, you'll be able to use your phone as the key to your room. So you'll never have to go to the front desk if you don't want to. And this idea about, um, you know, the connectivity. So, for example, because of wireless you can look and say, I'm coming, I'm driving to the hotel or I'm in a cab. They can contact me and say, hey, Elliot, I see you're 10 minutes from the hotel. If you want to park, we have two garages. We have valet in the front. So I just turn to the right before the building, and you could do self-park. It's a bit cheaper. One's 18 bucks. One's 25 bucks. Or uh, if you're in a cab, you know, just pull up here. Your room is ready. We're waiting for you. Is there anything we can do? It's the ability to connect in a customer. The customer's... We all want different experiences, but we want this consistency of experience, and we want to know that people are thinking about this. Now, the point is, well, you can say, well, that's a hotel. We're a hospital. But the hospitals are no different than hotels. When Brian was here, he said, you know, he was looking around, the massive confusion in the lobby, people coming and going. And he goes, people are stressed when they go to hospitals. Either their loved one is sick, or maybe they're not feeling well personally, and you want to be a very comfortable environment. He mentioned a lot of the fact that Marriott has hotels that are attached to hospitals and how they understand when people are sick, that the privacy or the, the whole experience becomes different. And so he's asking, and he was asking the questions that we really couldn't answer is why do we do things the way we do them, which is the way we've always done them. That's really our best reason. He mentioned Marriott's 95 years old, but they're constantly changing. They're changing with people. They're changing with how they approach things. And even though they're making all of these changes now, his point was also they're looking at the next set of changes. That changes, they were talking about the new hotel rooms, looking at the future, where the hotel room is so personalized. Because you come in the hotel, and you know from my profile that I like yoga, which I don't like. But if I did like yoga... They would put up on the screen, here's some exercises you can do in the room. Or, by the way, we have three classes tomorrow or today in yoga. You can sign up by pressing the button. And then they also would allow you, they would have, like, instead of having a picture in the room that might be of, uh, you know, uh, my favorite picture perhaps might be um, those five dogs playing poker with that one dog cheating. Maybe that's not what you like. But they would have the art that you like. So if you like Picasso's. The screens would all be Picassos. They may change. They may stay the same. If you wanted your family pictures to show up, you can connect to your iPhone or iPad or whatever, and then all of a sudden, everything you're seeing is going to be those kind of pictures. So I think that becomes very, very important, this personalization, where, where when you're going to the hotel, I know it's not your room, and 10,000 people may have stayed there before you, but for that night or that week or those four days you're in the hotel, that hotel is really 
making you feel at home, that you feel very comfortable in that hotel, and it's someplace you want to be, and there's someplace you want to go back to. His thought about adapting with change becomes very, very critical. I think what was really very refreshing about his talk, and in some ways it reflects what a lot of our other speakers have said, that uh, you know he had a quote of Charles Kettering, the world hates change, yet it's the only thing that has brought progress. So again, looking at what we do in hospitals, we do so much of what we're doing because we always did it that way. Again, think about the waiting room. What a dumb term. But can you think of something better? There has to be something better. And think about how you do things. It's often very impersonal. And even information, we were speaking this morning about things like Alexa, and one of the things he spent, spoke about also was Alexa, the use of voice, the use of communication, uh, where you, you know, you're communicating with the customer, meeting their needs. We spoke about how this translates to medicine. Uh, why can I check into the, uh, the Marriott anywhere around the world on my phone, yet I can't check into Hopkins on my phone? Why do I need to go to a desk, wait online, to, for someone to ask me the same dumb questions about my insurance number that I answered 27 different times? And with Marriott, they have your credit card. They don't need to ask a thousand questions. So, I mean, obviously medicine is different, there's HIPAA, but the truth is we use HIPAA as a criticism, uh, or as a question is what I really meant to say, that we use HIPAA as a way of saying, well, we're different, we can't be cutting edge, we can't be doing things right because we have HIPAA. The same thing with scheduling or reserving a room. Why can I reserve a room in, in Italy, in China, in Portugal, or in Baltimore in 20 seconds, and I can't make a CT appointment except calling a number where they put me on hold for 15 minutes, speaking to someone who knows zilch, why can't I just put a three o'clock? Just think about it. I can make a reservation for dinner. I can make a reservation for anything. There's no reason you can't do it for, for a CT scan. And in fact, with a CT reservation, you can then have a link that shows you how the exam is done, tells the patient what to prepare for, gives the patient lots of important information we can do so much more than that clerk answering who doesn't want to be there because they're getting minimum wage. We can do better. Now, it's interesting. Um, let's take a look at some of the questions people have asked. So let's see. Someone say, Maxine Clark, founder of Build a Bear, said that going to Macy's, Nordstrom, should be more about entertainment than selling shirts. Not our nuclear medicine department is about entertainment, but it's good to think of how we could change with our patients to give them the best experience possible. And I agree with Chris 100% because it's the experience people want. We need to read the films correctly. But you know very well, and we've had our speakers talk about this. So at Marriott, they may, he made the point that from the second you think about making a reservation till you got your bill, he owns you. That if the reservations are poor, he goes, for every few seconds people wait on hold, 20% drop off. If people are waiting, they're changing hotels from checking in the hotel to all the times in the hotel to getting your bill, getting the bill correct, and leaving and then paying your bill, if he screw ups any time, that's gonna hurt their business. The same thing here is, you know, I'm really good at reading CTs in all modesty, but if you ask the patients for evaluations, they'll, they'll say the parking was terrible, the front desk was rude, they didn't get their report, their bill was screwed up, people were bugging them, they never mentioned the fact that I was really good at reading the CT. And so we need to think about that same thing. It's that Cindy Wolf mentioned about running a, hotel, running a restaurant, that she owns you from the second you pull up in your car till you drive away. She can't say parking is bad or valet is bad. She needs to make certain that every piece of your experience is perfect because she owns you. And I think in hospital, we don't do that. Um, it's interesting. Um, why we don't do that. And I think perhaps we really haven't been challenged, but in a competitive world, in a world where people are gonna have more choice, where word of mouth, where if you look at Yelp, people are talking about hospitals, people are evaluating hospitals on the web. And if people have bad experiences with doctors or nurses or administrators or front desk or parking, they put it online and that's gonna hurt your business. If you wanna build up your business, you need the best CT protocols, you need the best CT contrast. 
You need the best CT interpreters, but that is an important thing, and that's what we do really well. But you need to do everything well from front to back, and I think people are going to expect that more. And Brian's talk really um, resonated. I have had more phone calls from people saying, oh, my God, you know, how can we do things the way we do? How can we change things? Uh, now, you don't want to have bad outcomes in a good experience. Obviously, quality uh, and doing the studies and reading the studies is critical, but we need to think about how we can make the patients more comfortable. When patients are sick or family members are sick, they're very fragile. They're not always in the best moods, but we can perhaps make things better, make that entire experience perfect. We can't always come out with great outcomes. Sometimes people have diseases. They have cancer. We can't change a patient with metastatic pancreatic cancer. We can do the best we can, but you can't, we can't cure everybody. We all know that. And we're never going to get perfect results in every patient. And we do try to minimize error and get the best results possible. But I think we need to expand the conversation and really think about how can we make the patients um, feel. Uh, there's a famous quote from Maya Angelou that people don't remember what you did specifically but they remember how you made them feel. And I think that's maybe uh, something we need to learn. And so um, there'll be an article in JACR with Brian King. We're going to write that article over the next few weeks. So we're very excited about that. And it was just an unbelievable visit. Uh, and it really makes us think. And I think um, I can tell you if you go to CT as Us, I did put some links of some interviews with Brian King. Or if you just go to uh, Google and type in Brian King of Marriott, you'll see some excellent interviews, and uh, I think it's worthwhile to listen. And with that, my time is up, and we'll see you in March. Take care. See you next time. Bye.